1917, a year after the Somme offensive, the British Expeditionary Force on the Western Front had evolved. It was better supplied, it was using new tactics, but its commander, Sir Douglas Haig, had been forced into a tough situation by the wider circumstances of the war. The French-led Nivelle offensive in the spring had ground to a halt amid massive casualties and a wave of mutinies among French troops. To the south, the Italians were faltering against the forces of Austria-Hungary, and in February, Russia was rocked by the first of its revolutions. Haig saw the war balanced on a knife edge. France was weakened. If Germany struck now, they might knock them out of the fight altogether. He needed to draw German forces away from France. The battleground of his choice was Flanders. By late 1914, the town of Ypres in western Belgium was in British hands. But by 1917, the war had taken a terrible toll of this historical town. The 13th century Clothal, now rebuilt, had been virtually obliterated by German shelling. The British position here was tenuous, but that did have the effect of luring the Germans in to a costly attritional struggle. The Allied line around Ypres formed a bulge or salient into German territory, overlooked by any positions on the surrounding high ground. If the Allies could seize the initiative, they could capture the high ground and even break through, push back the German line to take the Belgian ports, a hub for German u boats A preliminary attack was made at Messines Ridge in June, a strong point to the south of Ypres. The British commander of the Second Army there, Herbert Plumer, planned the attack in meticulous detail. 19 mines were detonated before zero hour, producing the loudest man-made sound ever recorded at the time. The mines killed thousands of German soldiers and left others stunned and incapacitated. Nine divisions of infantry followed, men drawn from Australia, Canada, New Zealand and Britain. With support from artillery bombardments and tanks, the infantry secured the ridge without suffering the kind of casualty rates normally associated with Western Front attacks. Messine was a success, but rather than build on the momentum of victory, the attack around here at Ypres wouldn't be ready for another six weeks. Although Haig wouldn't know it at the time, those six weeks represented the summer's best weather. With the change in weather came a change in command. The main attack would not be conducted by the victorious Plumer, Haig wanted results, and he believed that General Hubert Goff, a favourite of his, who'd risen from commanding a brigade to commanding the 5th Army in just two years, was the man to deliver. 